Welcome listeners and viewers and I guess those are just the two. That's, that's, as, that's the two categories. We get everybody that's, covered. Just that's that's as much as we have. Our, we are working on our newest project, the Virtual Reality Podcast, where you can be sitting right next to us and listen to the slurping of coffee. It makes sense that the, uh, you know, the podcast that we've kind of called Unraveled unravels this quickly. It does. <laughs> Oh, like it's or anything it, we've called it. I think that's what that's what sticks. Yeah, I, I I I feel like by the end of the year it's going to be welcome to the disaster con- <laughs> podcast. Like yeah. books will be falling off the shelves, it, your right? office will be on fire. That's, that's good. It'll be a good finale. Mm. Things are heating up. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, this is the I guess kind of the post Easter edition. Um, we have we have kind of gone out of order so uh normally we you know go one right after the other and uh we had to skip a week this time because you know we could not help but talk about atonement uh for easter weekend absolutely and uh, you know one of the things we talked about is atonement is another one of those kind of churchy words it's not exclusive to the church but it's certainly one where i think the church talks about it more than anybody else yep and you know they're there are churches that are kind of moving away from words like atonement or justification or mm-hmm. righteousness. And, and one of the things we've talked about is that, you know, the atonement is a, is a Bible word, it's a Bible concept. And, you know, we want to, we want to take the time and slow down. That's partly what this podcast is for. It's certainly right. what this study is for right. to slow down and actually learn some of the theology. That, that's true. And, and, you know, like you say, you and I have had these conversations where, and look, I, I get the understand uh, the, the thought behind, like trying to eliminate some of the Christianese, like sometimes the things we say and, you know, is it weird or off putting to people or make or isolating, making people feel like an outsider. But I also think there's a danger in just assuming everybody's with us and, Absolutely. and, you know, that people know things already or that they're, you know, it's i agree like you know we have to stop and slow down we have these words you know you can you can breeze by them or you can just catch everybody up and that's there's so much value to that you know you and i had a conversation on numerous occasions i remember there was a a woman in our church and just a wonderful woman of god she's since passed and i can remember she'd be one of these gals that like especially when i was young in ministry actually even before she passed she'd be somebody who i would look across the room at during a bible study and think, my soul, what am I going to teach you about the Bible? Just right. a giant in the faith. And I can remember we were talking about one of the very subjects we were addressing on Sunday. I was talking about the uh, the two goats, and specifically the scapegoat. Right. And I can remember afterwards, she came up to me and said, you know what, I had never understood that term before. And, and there, like, I mean, look, she'd been studying the Bible longer than I had been alive. You know what I mean? Hmm. Uh, you know, probably more than twice as long as I had been alive. And there's, there's always things to learn and a little concept. So I think, again, we do a real value in kind of stopping to talk about some of these things. Right. And, you know, the, the introduction of the whole scapegoat and really most of the instances where we find the word atonement uh, is in Leviticus. And that's where our first scripture today comes from. And, you know, if, you, if you've been around the Bible or, you know, you're kind of churchy at all, you know, it's easy to hear like Leviticus. Like, what are we doing in Leviticus? And you just kind of think it as this... You know, I'll kind of skip it. It's a bunch of these rituals and rules that don't apply to me. But if, if you actually stop and study the the book of Leviticus and understand all of these, like, rituals and sacrifices, and, and it actually, even in terms of uh, its literary form, mm-hmm. has this, like, symmetrical kind of building out of, of all these things, and it's, it's, it's really beautiful. But anyway, um, Leviticus uh, 17.11 says... For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. You know, it's funny, you talk about, you know, reading the book of Leviticus, and I know a lot of people, unless you're kind of trying to sound pretentious or something, it's like, you know, I was doing my devotional reading from Leviticus, but at the same time, you know what, Leviticus is a good book to get you ready for communion. Yeah, big time. Like, we're talking about the need of the spilling of blood and the significance that the life of a creature, and sometimes we think like, oh, animal, and that's kind of the the context here. You and I are the creature. Right. We are the created. That's what a creature is. Right. It's a created one, right? And 
the life of a creature is in its blood. And this, this text says, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. And it's the blood that makes atonement. There's we, One thing that we say often getting ready for communion at the corner is there is no forgiveness of sins without the spilling of blood. That's right. And, that, and that's made clear at Hebrews. And I think that, you know, we, we sing about the blood of Jesus and we talk about his blood that was spilled. I don't know if we necessarily, not that you want to be kind of a ghoul, but like, I don't know if we call to mind enough the imagery of that blood or the idea of, you know, when, when you would make atonement by the spilling of blood with this animal, you, you kind of had to look your sin in the eye, right? Because this is, uh, you know, an innocent that is perishing because of what you're what you've done, right? What you're doing. And, you know, it wasn't even like, well, you know, like we'll kill it and eat it. Like these were like, you know, often burnt offerings. And, and I'm not talking about, you know, the way that mom cooks steak. I'm talking, I mean, like it was, <laughs> you know, it was just beyond well done. I mean, it was, you know, that, that it was useless. Yes. Like, you know, it wasn't to consume. It was, I, I, I don't want to say wasted because there's a, you know, there's no. a reason. It's the opposite, right? And But here's what we need to understand about this. And it's the seriousness of sin. Mm. And sometimes, again, we've talked about this where there's been a de-emphasis on the Old Testament. And when you do that, I think sometimes that happens. Yeah. Where our our theology of sin gets messed up. And because I, and it's not because, like, oh, well, with these animal sacrifices are greater. They're not. Obviously, we need to understand from the New Testament that Jesus died for our sins. But... Our familiarity with that can sometimes remove the fact that, like, your sins are serious. Yeah. Like, it's really serious. Yeah, and it's and it's easy to be like, well, you know, God's God. Like, why did Jesus have to die? It's like, you have to understand how this holy God views sin. And that it's, it's not just like somebody else's sin or like, you know, whoever's sin in the Bible. It's, it's personal. It's right. individual. The... Your forgiveness is very, and your salvation is very individual. And so too is your sin and the offense of God. You can think, oh, well, I did this or I did that. It's not a big deal. You know, it's a big enough deal that his blood was spilled. And so See, have, if it's, it's the blood of Jesus, then it's serious. We have to understand as it relates to sin, both the justice and the wrath right. side of God. Right. And we tend to sometimes think of God in just the umbrella of grace. And God is love, and he is full of grace, and he is full of mercy, but he is not a giant fuzzy fuzzy. No. Right? And so we can say, well, why did Jesus have to die? Like, why is there having to be all this blood? Like, couldn't he just, like, fix it? Like, couldn't he just erase it? Like, he's God, right? He can do whatever he wants. God will not go against his own nature. He no. is perfection. Okay? And because of that, because of that, he has this justice and it's not like some like, like oh, like we, we just kind of be like it is the definition of justice. It's a standard, right? And so because of that, it can't be just like well, sin is fine. Like it, it's not that it can be or should be atoned for. It's it has to be mm. in order for us to have right standing with God. It has to be atoned for. And again, this is this is where we see the significance of the blood because it's only by blood, right? it can be atoned for. And, and again, it's important to understand too, that this isn't like a, like on this corner, we have God in this corner, we have the devil. And like that it's, you know, if the devil wins and that's the wrath part, it's like you, you are saved, not like by you're saved from sin and you're saved uh, from the wrath of God. You're not saved from the devil and his, you know, like he, he doesn't win. Like right. in any scenario, he doesn't win. He loses no matter what. So his goal is to take you with him. Right. Right. And that's, and again, that's, that's sometimes what we forget. You see what the devil receives, what Satan receives is God's wrath because that's what he deserves. In fact, that takes us kind of into our second scripture, mm. which is Romans six twenty three, which says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Right. And this this is again what we have to understand like the devil is getting death he's getting 
what he deserves, mm -hmm. okay? And he wants you to be there with him. But again, we have to understand that, th like, this is, this is the payment. Like, the wages, like, your right earnings of sin is death. And, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so, listen, sometimes this, our theologies can be all out of whack. And that's a lot of what Core 52 is about. Right. Okay. So even when you think of the concept of worship, that we praise God for who he is, and we praise God for who we are in him and what he's done for us and, and all these things. But here's the thing. Sometimes our worship needs a little bit of a fire starter yep. because of bad theology. Okay. And I don't mean, oh, because you're, you know, pronouncing something wrong or just don't have quite have this... Here's what it is. When we have a bad theology of sin, that means that we don't we don't understand the seriousness of it. Right. We've kind of moved into like it's not really that big a deal. Okay. When we have a poor theology of sin, that's going to lead to a poor theology of salvation. Okay. That we don't understand what we're saved from. Like you said, like it's like the devil wants us, but God got us, and yeah, the devil loses or wins or loses, and like no. You've missed it. Right. And so we don't understand salvation. And when we don't have a proper understanding of our salvation, we typically have a poor theology of worship. Because right. we're, we're, we think, well, oh, we just kind of worship God. It's eternal life. And Jesus saved the day. And, and look, none, none of that stuff is wrong. Right. But it's not complete. It's no. It's a wrong theology. No, worship, like I would say, always or at least nearly always, is a response to Absolutely. what God has done and what God has given. And it's not just like we can yeah. praise him because he's great and we can praise him because he's God and because he's worthy and he is all those things and he's worthy of worship by all of that alone. Mm -hmm. But to understand what we are saved from, right? And again, I don't think, and maybe we talked about this in a previous week, I feel like we did, about how we don't always view ourselves as needing redeemed, as needing a right. savior like we like well i'm not that bad of a guy or i'm not that you know i've done that much stuff or or whatever is whatever else it is like worship should be with a full understanding of how great god is and that he cared about me at all but that he cared enough to save me and save me by the giving of his son right and, and we need to understand that that you know that is that is salvation and we are really good in the church, and really good in this world. It's about making, just kind of making everything about us. Mm -hmm. And so even in the church, what we'll do is make our salvation about doing gooder, right? We talk about that a lot. Right. And so we say, okay, well, sin is bad, and, and uh, you know, doing right is good, and so I'll just make sure that I do a lot, a lot of good, and I'll be better right. and better at doing good. And again, we, oftentimes, let's say this is, this is very much a you know, Easter kind of message. It's a communion type of message. Like, we don't approach God in right standing. We don't gather around the table because of who we are or what we've done. Right. We do it because of who he is. That's right. And what he's done, and therefore, who we are in him. Right. And and again, you know, and we talked about this before, too, with, with the law of Moses and, and whatever else, that, you know, we, we are not gooder or in right standing uh, by any law or law keeping. Right. But in the same way, though, um, the right response to the law and our act of, you know, law keeping is not out of legalism, but it's a response. Right. It is it's very much an act of worship. That's It's exactly what it is. You know, if if we believe that God is who he says he is, if we believe that that Jesus is the Christ and that he died, then you are in, in you always act out according to your belief. Right. So yeah. if, if you believe it then that's how it's going to go. You know, I mentioned on Sunday, you know, if if I'm afraid of bees and then all of a sudden a couple of bees start swirling in my head, I'm going to act out that belief. Yes. I can't help it. You right. Know? And, you, and you could, but then what you could do is you could say, I am not afraid of bees. Right. And then when bees start circling and you start freaking out, you're proclaiming your belief. That's right. And, 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 listen, and you can't the, help but do it. One of the most dangerous things that Christians do is we do that, we make these proclaims, like, I fully rely on God. And then we live like there is no God. Right. That misses. It doesn't work. Right. And 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 you might fool me. Uh, I know it's going to fool you. You're easy to fool, yeah. Yeah, very. <laughs> and I am a fool. 
Just we're the, this, this whole podcast is just it's Let's just fooling. That's the new name of the podcast. It's just fooling. <laughs> um, but no, you know, like it, it, that's you're not going to fool God. No. And and God will not be mocked. That's it. And, that, and that's the thing. You know, it's funny. We'll see instances of scripture in that. And it's, it's almost comical to think about. I, my favorite is going all the way back to the beginning when Adam and Eve have, have eaten the fruit. And it says that God is, is walking in the garden in the cool of the day and, and Adam and Eve hide. And they hid, yeah. Right. And, and this is this is me hiding. Right. Yeah. Yours is better. Yeah. Like, naturally. It's, it's almost kind of funny to look at. And it's like, God's like, I see ya. Yeah. You know, it's like when you're playing hide and seek with, uh, uh, with a toddler, right? They, right? they go hide behind, you know, just something that's very visible and then talk to you. Yeah. I'm, yeah. How did you see me? I had my eyes covered. You're, right. Classic grand line. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, but that's, that's the idea. Yeah. Like, you can't, you can't fool God. And again, we, as you said, we will, we will act out our belief. Like, mm. you can say as much as you want. And look, saying things is important. Sure. But we will act out our belief. So worship is a response to the salvation from sin, and it's sin that God takes seriously, and so should we, because um, of the cost of it. The, and, you know, Christ was the ransom for our sin. That's talked about in 1 Peter uh, 1, 18 and 19, which is our final piece of scripture. It says, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. And of course, that is the sacrificial lamb. And again, noticing he's like, not with like perishable things, not with common things, like silver or gold, right? So he's talking about the richest, you know, riches of the time. I guess, you know, silver and gold are still riches of our time. But uh, something much more important, the blood of the spotless lamb, which is right. Christ. Absolutely. And, you know, again, sometimes I think our familiarity can hold us back here. Yep. That Jesus is God's son and that, you know, Jesus had to die. God's son had to die. And we, and I think we almost kind of erase it in our minds because he was raised three days later and, right. and God knew what he was going to do. And like, so you know, it makes, it's, it's a big deal. It's, it's a big deal. It's the but biggest it, deal. You no, know, you, and you and I, I know you've used this illustration and, and so have I, and, uh, you know, I've, I've said on numerous occasions, and I'm, I'm hoping that in this situation I can say it without crying because I, I generally uh, can't. Mm -hmm. But if if you needed my son, one of my boys, you, you'd be out of luck. Yeah. And if, if and it wouldn't be just you. Be if your whole church and my whole church, the whole province, I'm sorry. Yep. And as much as I might be willing to give my life for yours, I would never give theirs. I refuse. No. And it's it's just because the cost is too high. It's, it's because the cost is too high. The the item for redemption is too valuable to me. That's right. I and, won't give it up. I won't part with it. And, you know, in, in a lot of ways, uh, I mean, you're painting with a broad brush over a lot of people, but I mean, even just to consider about worthiness, and it's not worthiness in a like in a vacuum or worthiness on whatever standard. It's worthiness to me, yes. right? For me to give my son or daughter for you, or you know, the, even with the idea, even if you could, if if you could go far enough along the road with the idea to establish. Um, how worthy the person is or, or what kind of a trade you're making. I'm not, I'm not phrasing this well, but like it, whether or not they would deserve it right. or they would honor what happened. You know, there's this, there's this story of a, uh, I'm not going to tell it well, but uh, there's, there's a story of this soldier, this, you know, who was in Vietnam and he was a leader of this, uh, you know, group. I don't know what they're called out there, but uh <laughs> Anyway, there was, uh, you know, they were under heavy fire. They were in a bad situation. There was somebody out, out of their group that, you know, was in in major danger. And it was very clear that the, that he was probably lost and that any attempt to save him, even if it worked, uh, would be, you know, certain death for whoever went. And so it's the leader of this this group. And so he goes and he actually ends up retrieving the the soldier that's in trouble. But he does succumb to his injuries, not the soldier, but the rescuer. Yes. And so 
you know, the, the war is over and people are home and, and the parents of the fallen soldier hear that this, this man that was rescued is in town and, and they want to connect with him, you know, as, as a means of by connecting with their son. And so they invite him over for dinner. And while he's there, he is, he arrives, he's obviously drunk and he's, you know, he's rambunctious and he's obnoxious and he tells off color jokes and he just does not seem to show any appreciation or gratitude for the sacrifice that was made. And, you know, they try to make the most they can of the evening. And when he finally leaves, you know, the mother just closes the door and she collapses on the floor and she, you know, exclaims, I can't believe our son died for someone like that. And, and then you hear that and you're like, oh, it's awful. And you have to stop and, and put yourself in the story, as we often say, right? And, you know, Jesus is the, is the rescuer and we are the rescued. And, the uh, and, and the undeservingly so. And see, and that's, that's what you have to understand about this kind of atonement, this Jesus kind of atonement, is it's full of grace mm. and it's full of mercy. And grace is receiving what you do not deserve, which is freedom mm -hmm. and eternal life. And mercy is not getting what you do deserve, which is death mm -hmm. and eternal separation from God. That's what we deserve. Yeah. And the precious blood of Christ, I love how it says that in verse 19, like a lamb without blemish or defect, that is what administers atonement grace and mercy to us and that's why on easter man i don't know like uh at bird's corner it was one of our first more normal services we had a lot of people there and and uh, or say a lot of people but a lot more than what we've had mm -hmm. and like you know people could you know interact with each other and see each other some afterwards we had a little breakfast before and man i just left celebrating mm -hmm. and and worshiping uh, you know that we that we were there together we because of the work of, of jesus because of the blood of jesus on the cross we were there in right standing with god and right mm -hmm. standing with one another and and the beautiful thing is that we don't just celebrate that at easter we celebrate it every week every day yep and and you know what it's it's funny to think about too because what you're doing in a way is you are celebrating unfairness yes Right. We're all like if, about, if, if you're, yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, and like, and we complain that life is not fair. And, you know, if you're watching a, a game, a sports game and whatever, and you feel like, you know, the, you're getting cheated somehow and, you know, you cry unfair and, and look, there, there are parts of life, that, the way things unfold that are, you know, objectively deeply unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't want fairness in terms of, of the grand scope of things in God, because fairness is not receiving the grace, is not receiving the mercy. Uh, it's certainly not receiving atonement. Um, we, you know, we have, I don't know, we, we have a just God and, and by some measures an unfair God and praise God for that. Yes, I remember hearing that a long time ago, that God is just, but he's not fair. Mm. And you ought to be praising him for it. That's a good word. Yeah, that's a good word. I think that's that might be that might yeah. be the place to, to put the button. I on. think that's a button for sure. That's it. So listen, thank you again so much for joining us uh, for day four devotion or unraveled or whatever the kids call it. <laughs> the kids, it's very popular amongst amongst the youth. I understand. Yes, the young people's are going nuts for yeah. the podcast. <laughs> exactly. So with that. Thank you again, Ben, for your time and for Absolutely. your insight. And to thank you to those of you who are watching. We're going to uh, we're going to wrap things up by by thanking the Lord uh, for His provisions for another day. So let's go ahead and pray. Let's do it. Our gracious God, Lord, with another Easter season in our rear view, Lord, I pray that it would always stay in the front of our minds. That every week we uh, we celebrate, Lord, that that Christ has died, that Christ has risen, and that Christ will come again. And we, we so look forward to that, Lord. We, we say, Lord, Jesus, come soon. And uh, I thank you for this conversation we can have. I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that you've provided a way 
to heaven through atonement. We don't marvel, Lord, that you're the only way. We marvel that there's a way at all. Mm. So, Lord, we, we just give you all the thanks, all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right on. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you to everybody that listened. And uh, we're going to unravel the rest of the way, and we'll be raveled back up. Is that a word, raveled back up? I don't know. We'll be, we'll be with you next week. It fits with the podcast. <laughs> All right. Over and out.